Hey guys, and welcome back to Two Years Industry Land webinar series. Here today, today with me is Dylan from Two Years Hospitality and Residential Team, and with me I have Nick from our partner IO Things. So first of all, I'll jump in, introduce a little bit about IO Things, introduce the background for today, then I'll bring in Nick for a full introduction because we're going to find out a lot more about IO Things and what they're up to in Thailand at the moment. So just a bit about IO Things. IO Things Company Limited, or better known as IO Things, is Thailand's IoT guru providing turnkey solutions from consultation and distribution through to installation and after-sales support of IoT projects. For consumers or businesses looking to futurize their homes, condos, offices, hotels, or large-scale residential projects, IO Things have specific solutions in place to meet the demand, which we'll touch on a bit later today. So their slogan, Make Things Easy, reflects on their desire to make IoT adoption easy for everyone, and I think that's something we can all agree on. So, Nick... That's a bit of an introduction to you guys, but welcome. Um, please introduce yourself and a bit about the company. Okay. So um, first, um, thank you um, for having me. Um, my oh. name is Nick Amput. I'm currently the managing director of IO Things, uh, based here in Thailand. So as um, Dylan uh, mentioned, uh, we position ourselves as the IoT guru for both um, the retail market, being private homes, uh, to the B2B market, uh, be it, you know, residential projects or um, smart offices or smart factories as well as smart apartments. Awesome. So, I mean, you guys are kind of covering the whole range at the moment here. So just a question in terms of why did you start to move into IoT? I know that wasn't always perhaps your background. Um, and what potential did you see in that initial point in the local Thai market and the Southeast Asian market that made you think this is going to be our opportunity? Okay. Um, so. Our um, management and our shareholders actually come from uh, the technology space. Um, we have people that uh, have done uh, or currently um, is uh, managing cloud companies, um, tech startups, um, and so on and so on. So we're quite familiar with uh, new um, disruptive um, transform transform transformative technology, um, IoT being one of them. Um, we foresee a future uh, where the world where everything is connected in the world, connected to the internet. Uh, and I think that um, IoT will be the bridge that connects the digital world um, to the physical world. Uh, and there's obviously tremendous growth in that. Uh, and that's why we decided to start IO Things in uh, the early days of uh, the IoT um, age. Awesome. And I mean, for you guys, you, sp you focus specifically towards the Southeast Asian market, is that correct? Or are you trying to go yeah. trying to cover the globe? Right. Um, right now, we're mainly focused in the Thai market. Um, we do have plans, I think, eventually, uh, maybe to expand to neighboring countries, but currently we're focused in the, the Thai market. Sure. So when you guys got started, my question is that when you looked at the market around you, you understood that IoT was going to have a big impact, but was there any specific <laughs> sector that you looked at and you were like, right, there's going to be our chance? Or is there any particular image you had in your head of there's a certain point we can hit in this Thai market that may not be the same somewhere else? Um, so, well, I guess um, just to give you a bit of uh, more background, um, we initially um, started to, I guess, explore IoT um, through another one of our um, uh, subsidiary companies. Um, and we basically implemented a smart office uh, solution for that um, company. And eventually, um, we, we figured that, you know, we could possibly sell this. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's why we started, um, IO things. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah, at first, um, since the other company being a cloud company, um, our clients are 100, 100% um, businesses, mm -hmm. um, purely B2B. Um, so we figured with the smart office, uh, solution that we implemented at one of our offices, uh, maybe we could also sell that to our B2B clients. Mm -hmm. So that's how. Um, we came to be, and that's, I guess, uh, the, the, the initial focus, uh, of, of the, the customers. Work. I see. So the story kind of started with your first client, right? You had someone approach right. you guys and be like, oh, can you help us with this office project? And then you realized, okay, actually, we can do this pretty good, and there's definitely going to be a market for this here. Right, right, right. Okay, awesome. I mean, it's an interesting start. And for you guys, when I look at the website and I look at obviously your background, we've been working with you guys for a while. You're really trying to cover that wide range of bases um, in terms of the enterprise IoT solutions. And we'll touch on that a bit later. 
But could you highlight just before we jump in a bit further, the specific industries you're really focusing on at the moment at IO Things and where you think you're mm -hmm. going to be going in the future? Okay. Um, we're focused on uh, residential projects as well as hotels and apartments um, right now. Mm -hmm. I see. So that's the key at the moment. Right, right. Sure. Are you still doing the smart office work? Yes, as well. Cool. I mean, so we're going to jump in a little bit and find out exactly how we're working with you guys specifically in that residential and hospitality space. But I think for people, when they look through your website, they'll try and look through perhaps some of your past cases as well. So there's mm -hmm. one that really kind of stands out to me, which is the Parco condominium. Um, I was mm -hmm. going to give a little bit more background about that one and exactly how you guys helped out so we can give the audience a bit of context about the services you're providing in that space. Okay. Okay. Um, so the Parco condominium uh, was a is a private uh, luxury condo um, located in the heart of Bangkok. Um, the owner is actually um, one of the founders of a of a large furniture company here in Thailand. So he's quite um, also into um, technology as well as um, into uh, furniture. Mm -hmm. um, so the condo was already fully fitted out when we went in. Um, so we had to do a lot of custom uh, retrofit job. Mm -hmm. Um, which was quite challenging, you know, um, when, when, when you didn't, you know, start off, uh, basically at the design stage, but, uh, more on the, I guess, um, the custom fit, retrofit solution. Um, so the technical retrofitting, um, was definitely a challenge, um, as well as since it's a luxury condo, aesthetics was really important as well. Um, yes, yeah, but we were able to basically, I think from the start of the, solution design to implementation, we were able to finish it in, let's say, two months um, for a 500 square meter um, condo. So yeah, I think it um, went pretty well and the owners were definitely happy. So I think on that point, the thing we can probably highlight again before diving in is that I'm assuming when you guys worked on that project, you kind of just installed them as individual smart homes, right? When you went and installed the condos, for example, you, right. went, you installed one, then you go and install the next. Um, mm -hmm. So just for the audience who's coming here today, because we'll have some who are coming to find out a bit about those residential solutions and hospitality ones, I'll kind of jump in and explain as well, um, is that what we kind of define as the difference is that when we look at providing a B2B solutions for these smart condos, is that for you guys, instead of going and individually installing each one, I can imagine there it makes it a little bit harder to manage when you have more than say five apartments, right? So what I, we kind of work with you guys on, and we'll talk about it more, is having that platform that you can do the batch installation of right, 100, right, right. 200, 300 smart apartments, right? Which is the benefit here. Um, and we're gonna right. to touch on that and exactly how you guys are util utilizing it. But for the audience mm -hmm. who come to kind of find out a little bit more, um, we do have a solution in-house for that and we can help you building that for your B2B business. Um, it runs on a SaaS platform. So if you have any questions about that during the webinar or afterwards, feel free to hit me or Nick up and we can discuss that a little bit further. So, yeah, I think we'll dive in a bit more to you guys and specifically in terms of enterprise IoT. Because mm -hmm. I think that you guys did a little bit of work in terms of smart home, but you guys are obviously very favored towards those enterprise solutions. So what kind of attracted you so much? Because the obvious jump in for a lot of people going into like the retail market is they look to go into just doing that straight b2c sale right a lot of people's mm -hmm. communities in iot they say okay i'm going to build my brand build a product and sell that in the b2c market what directed you guys in thailand which there is still a big b2c opportunity um what right. directed you guys more towards the enterprise iot sector yes um so since we have um a large customer base uh, of which 100 percent are uh, enterprises um, we, I think right now we have a customer base of around a thousand, um, enterprises in Thailand. Um, we, we talk to companies often and, and we know that most of the companies in Thailand now, uh, realize the importance of digital technology mm -hmm. and IOT is one of their biggest push. Um, and IOT is quite complicated. It's not simple, especially for, um, uh, enterprise implementation. So customers, um, definitely need help in this field. Um, and that's where, you know, our knowledge and our expertise comes into play in helping um, enterprises understand, use and adopt IoT. Cool. So, I mean, in that sense that when you look at the, the local market, especially, how do you think you guys stand out from the competition in the spaces of residential and hospitality? Mm -hmm. 
I think we're we're probably one of the market leaders. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, since IoT is quite new, I think. Um, you know, not only in Thailand but I think glo- globally. Um, so um, there's not a lot of uh, people with experiences, mm-hmm. um, and us being one of the first uh, to, I, I guess, be a a pure play IoT company uh, mm-hmm. in in Thailand. Um, yeah, we 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 definitely have um, enough know how and experience to, to help enterprises. I mean, you're the specialist, right? And if right, we're right. Asking, as we progress forwards a bit further down the line with the the residential and hospitality routes, um, mm-hmm. there are very few players around in the market, really. For some, right. very few specialists who can really help in that space. And I think it's right. we both recognize the fact that the, the demand is still quite young. Um, we'll go a bit more into hotels and apartments, but from my side, I can admit that when you approach many a hotel directly or you go and speak with hotel managers, this is something that requires a lot of education for your client, which takes a lot of time and you have to have a real level of expertise. And it's not just about you guys being the experts, it's about the service in which you can help your client understand exactly what you can deliver with IoT. And it's not just the idea when you look at, for example, a hotel or apartment, in having you know, fancy tech inside, <laughs> which is what I think some people assume it to be. It's more about how do you improve the operability of the property, make it more long-term sustainable and future-proof as well. So on that note, I think we'll kind of move in specifically to how we're working together, um, mm-hmm. exactly what we did with you guys and the tools we're kind of working together on building that are going to deliver those turnkey solutions in the time market. So for you guys in terms of the hospitality platform, would you mind introducing a little bit about what you were able to do with us and, and what you're using that to do to deliver in the market now? And then we'll move on to residential. Yes. Okay. So um, we have um, a number of um, customers that are hotels um, in Thailand. Uh, and, you know, initially they were looking for a smart uh, hotel solution. Um, mainly right now, I think they're focused on uh, customer experience, um, user experience. Um, so we we um, use two years hotel SaaS uh, mm-hmm. platform to be able to enable them to have a smart hotel um, system. I think the the thing a lot of people perhaps don't understand from our side with that one is is that the SaaS isn't really designed for us as a B two C solution. So in that mm-hmm. sense, you guys got it very quickly, but a lot of people don't see that when we say B two C, that is two years going into a hotel, installing the full range. Um, of right. smart devices and the operating is their essentially manager. That's not really what we do. Um, when we can't be in every local market and we don't have the expertise you guys have. So what we try to do for you is create a tool that's a B2B tool, which is pretty much everything we do here. We are mostly B2B focused. So it allows you guys to rapidly jump in and have that smart hotel solution without having to put in all the man hours and building the tech, right? So you guys, to us, especially on our team, are a really great case if someone has utilized that particularly in hospitality, in a market where we see there's such a huge opportunity. And we're really, really hopeful in the long term for you guys because that Thai market in particular, we see really big chances just potentially post-COVID. And we're sparking a little bit now. And that kind of leads me on to my next question, that down the route of hospitality, because when you talk about smart hotel or smart hospitality, there's a lot of different things that encompass it right now, right? Um, mm-hmm. From our side, we see the big draw in for a lot of hotel clients at the moment is mostly towards that smart access and any kind of form mm-hmm. of COVID prevention. When you mention anything like uh, smart in-room guest control, there is a focus for that. Mm-hmm. But in terms of the big picture, most of them say, look, right now we just need a smart access solution and some way of making the hotel safe. So how's right. the feedback for you guys been as you've been fishing around the, the Thai hospitality market, which I know is taking a bit of a hit this year? Um, how have they found the idea of adopting smart hotel? And has there been anything in specific? They were like, we need that and we need that. Yes, um, definitely. Um, so a lot of the operators here in Thailand are, yeah, as you mentioned, interested in uh, a solution where, you know, they can help increase the safety of their guests, be it, you know, security solutions or hy- hygiene solutions, um, especially uh, during COVID. Um, smart access, uh, as you mentioned, um, those are all things that I think um, uh, the operators here in Thailand are interested in as well. Mm-hmm. I said that they're generally interested in the full picture, basically. Right, right, right. <laughs> I see. It's interesting. And in terms of you guys, when you moved into hospitality, 
just for the people watching today here, your inside mm -hmm. expert opinion, what would be some of the key devices you think are critical to having a smart hotel um, in terms of the hardware? Um, okay, the in-room guest experience probably would be the lights, um, the AC, uh, the curtains, um, and I think right now a lot of our customers are interested in you know thermal detection, uh, temperature detection, um, as well as uh, CCTV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we can jump on the same board with that one. We see also a lot on the worldwide scale in terms of the sensor management that kind of links more into security. Um, just so you can have a more comprehensive security solution, particularly in some of the more urban areas. Um, mm -hmm. So the most of your hotels, do you find them to be in an urban setting? The ones you work with, are they going to be more, well, towards the beach or towards the countryside? Um, typically in the urban settings, I think. Right. So... What we're hoping to see from our side with you guys is kind of moving into next year that as there's a bit more investment coming into hotels in Thailand again, um, mm -hmm. as we move out of the pandemic, we're going to hopefully see a bit more widespread adoption. Um, right. Sure you guys can really load up those clients coming into next year. And I think it's yeah. really hopeful in that sort of long term, medium to long term view of the adoption of IoT in hotels. We, we just see it to be, it's going to be step by step. Um, so we hope that you guys can be primed to kind of go there and attack, for example, that client who says, okay, for now I'll start with smart access, right? Just mm -hmm. the way we design the tool for you guys is that you can kind of layer it. So you don't have mm -hmm. to go in and say, okay, you can everything or nothing. You know, you can have the full mm -hmm. smart shell or you can have nothing. The idea mm -hmm. is that we hope that you can go in and if someone says, okay, look, I'd like the idea of the in-room control, but maybe next year, let's start with the access control or the sensor management. And then we build that up and we move further from there. So right. that's what we hope to see going forwards. Um, so I think now we kind of touched a bit on hospitality. Have you found there to be any differences when you go into the apartment or condo sector, um, particularly in Thailand? And do you think there's a bit of a different understanding from the consumer in terms of what they want? Um, comparing between the hotel market and the apartment market? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think... Um, the the requirements are are quite different because hotel um hotels typically people you know they stay for a short period of time um as opposed to condos or apartments where it's a, uh, it's a long term stay mm -hmm. um so uh, i guess what people are looking for or what um, i guess the operators or the owners are looking for is quite different mm -hmm. um as well but one thing that um, is definitely um uh, uh, something that they share in similar is is as you mentioned earlier um, the construction management part, uh, where, you know, you don't have to, um, implement one room at a time and, you know, one room, one app. Um, mm -hmm. you could do batch, um, batch, um, what's it called? Batch installation mm -hmm. as well as, uh, batch configuration for all the smart devices. Um, but, uh, on the, let's say on the user side, mm -hmm. um, for the hotels, uh, I think one of the big selling point would be, uh, the web app. Uh, the, you don't necessarily have to download a, basically a native uh, mobile application onto the, onto the guest's phone, uh, which I think increases a lot of friction. Um, so it's quite convenient for the guests just to be, be able to, um, control, control, um, their smart hotel rooms just through the web app. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the apartments, since it's longer term stay, uh, people are uh, more open or more willing to install um, mobile apps on their phone. Um, the rest, I think, probably sharing some um, similar um, requirements, such as uh, you know, smart lighting, smart base, uh, air control. Um, yeah. Well, another thing on the hotel side that's interesting eventually is um, if the uh, tourism market starts to rebound. Would be the uh, the app mall um, where hotels. Um, this is actually a feature that a lot of the uh, operators that we talk to are interested in. Is the app mall um, where they could uh, sell, uh, let's say, maybe local goods, souvenirs, uh, you know, to the, the hotel guests um, as another channel for them to increase um, revenue. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. The apartment market shares a uh, similarity between the hotel market uh, as well as the um, smart home market. 
I think yeah. it's an interesting point you hit on with the app more. I'll kind of introduce a little bit more about the guests who come to watch and then don't really understand the full story of that. So what we can provide from Twio's side is it comes with what's called a value-added service, is that you can embed into that guest web app or on the residential side, that downloadable app, um, essentially a mall, we call it, or an in like a store you can use within your hotel or apartment. Um, initially with Twio, this was built to allow a brand, for example, build their own hardware section, and they can go and sell that to their consumers within the original Twio Smart app. But for now, what we've done is it can essentially be replaced. And if you want to sell hardware within your hotel, that's absolutely fine. But generally, as you know, most hotel brands aren't that interested at the moment in building a range of smart locks. But what they are interested in is having one app in which the guests can control the lights in the room. They can check in, check out, and they can also have that in-hotel retail opportunity. Um, and a bit of an insight from me, I, I guess it's no secret I'm based here in China at the moment. And something from my perspective that's been really interesting is that generally most of the smartest hotels in the world I've seen, uh, a lot of them are coming from here and all the new ideas are really being tested here. Um, and this has meant that I've been able to go and see hotels recently in which I can sit in the room, I can use that phone app for my voice to control the lights, the curtains, everything else, which is a guest, which is you know, a really big impression. But then also it's connected to all the in-hotel retail. So for example, I can then say to my smart speaker that I would like a bottle of water brought to the room and a robot brings it up. Um, which to me has been a really interesting insight. And I think we're really not far from that connected experience in the next one, two, three years. Um, we've seen companies in the US and, and in Thailand as well, for example, on that uh, room service section. So for example, speaking to your Alexa or your Google Assistant and saying, I would like the bottle of water and the robot can bring it up. Um, or for example, we have some companies doing that in-room control it's just at the moment what we're trying to do here at Two Year and provide you guys with is kind of bringing all the pieces of the puzzle together, basically. Um, and you can have it all under one platform. And it is coming, I can tell you. It's going to be continually built out from our side. And we hope that as the years go by, the world's going to be running on a more connected hotel ecosystem. And that guest experience isn't going to feel clunky when they have to use one app to get into the door. And then there's going to be another hotel web app. And then there's going to be another room service robot handling everything on the back end. We just want everything to be totally connected and make it really easily adoptable for those hotel managers. Because I'm sure from your guys' side, it's sometimes you will have people look at this, be like, wow, it looks fantastic on face value. How do I train this to my staff? And is it going to be frictionless or is this going to be causing me more problems in the long run? So that's the idea. Um, so then kind of touching back again, onto the residential sector. I, I think the points mm -hmm. highlighted are probably the same as what we receive. Um, generally, there's a lot of similarities, We're right, in terms of the demand. Uh, for example, when your hotel manager says, okay, look, I can see this is gonna add real value to my hotel. Therefore, for example, I can increase the price of the room by X percent. We have a very similar thing from the apartment managers. Um, and it also talks about upkeep rates as well. So that kind of focuses on what we call like ancillary revenue. and mm -hmm how exactly the implementation of the smart technologies can directly relate somehow to increasing the overall value of the property and the attractiveness of the property. Um, I think it depends on the local market. I imagine with Thailand, there's a bit more of an attractiveness with this in the hotel sector because it's, just, I imagine, slightly more competitive than multifamily, um, at least from my understanding, but we can touch on that. Um, but the principle still applies. It's how exactly can I increase that property value by going smart? Um, that's a really big similarity we see. The other one, like you said, at the moment in terms of the COVID control, um, so having that smart access solution that has contactless check-in or at least contactless access to the property. Um, the difference there, again, is that we see a lot higher pressure on that on the hotel side, because generally, even whether or not the apartment is smart, there's no check-in, there's no real human contact going on as they're coming in and out of the hotel, um, especially relative, oh, sorry, coming in and out of the apartment, especially relative to that hotel sector. Um, and then on the flip side, a bigger demand we see in the apartment sector for ours is that the security and the level of sensors being deployed in the building. Um, cause we look into things like property management then. For example, when we install those water leak sensors behind the washing machine, most hotels you walk into won't have the washing machine and won't have one that people are in there long enough to use it and create a leak. But this is something that's a really big problem in those apartments. So yeah, I think. We're going to kind of move now towards that local market expertise. And we're going to be looking to you guys, since you're the experts in Thailand, to kind of tell us a bit about what's a bit different you see in the Thai market compared to the rest of the world. So 
we'll jump into that. And the first question is kind of that when you look at the Thai market in particular, whether it be hospitality or residential, do you see there's any differences in terms of the benefits that IoT can bring? Is there anything specific you've seen in Thailand that perhaps you don't see elsewhere in which IoT can have a significantly higher impact or, or maybe not? I think it's quite um, similar across the board. Um, I think uh, what people are looking to achieve with IoT is you know, automation, increase in security, power saving, um, increase um, in safety in terms of hygiene, um, as well as uh, uh, experience, uh, which you know they subsequently they hope that it helps with branding as well. Um, yeah, I think pretty similar, I, I would say. I remember I took part in kind of a webinar series recently focused towards Southeast Asia and Thailand, and mm -hmm. some. Mm -hmm. I still have a really basic understanding of the market, but something mm -hmm. I found really interesting to learn was actually not so much in terms of IoT, but more in the property sector, that more and more mm -hmm. younger people are looking to buy that second holiday home and rent an Airbnb or rent it as an apartment building. Um, and this is becoming more and more common. So in terms mm -hmm. of the clientele you work with, particularly in the hospitality sector, do you think you're going to be seeing an increasing number of those millennials who are looking to find a way to manage their holiday homes? Or do you still think a lot of your clients are going to be focused more on those kind of more old school hotel institutions that you have in Thailand? Um, I think probably uh, on the latter. Um, right now, I think the property market in Thailand, before it was overheating, um, before COVID, and now especially with COVID, there's uh, definitely quite a um, uh, large amount of oversupply. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, especially... Uh, with the low number of tourists um, right now in Thailand. Um, property, I think second property or third properties uh, in terms of our investment for renting out uh, on Airbnb, um, I think um, it's probably a bit slow right now. Um, yeah, so we're more, more focused uh, on the uh, on the B2B front. Um, yeah, the operators, hotel operators, uh, managed management, companies, property management companies. I see. Interesting. And then kind of throughout COVID, um, have you kind of found that when you pitched the idea of a smart hotel, you mentioned people were really interested in that kind of mm -hmm. in control aspect, but have mm -hmm. you ever had any hotels come back and tell you, not right now, um, you know, we're trying to save cash right now. We'll talk about it in one year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically um, to sort of uh, summarize the, COVID wave uh, in Thailand or the COVID situation in Thailand, we had probably maybe we two uh, large wave, one being the, the first one last year, I think that everyone encountered. Um, during that period, I think, you know, people were expecting a quick rebound. Um, mm -hmm. So when, we're, when we were engaging with our clients uh, last year, a lot of them were, okay, well, you know, um, let's wait two, three months, four months. They were definitely interested and they, they were eager to start implementing. Um, but, you know, we got our second wave during, I think, um, December of last year, January of last year. Um, and, you know, people or I think hotel operators are becoming more and more reluctant in terms of um, investing. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think that's where we are right now. Um, so people are still quite um, hesitant. They were they were very eager in the beginning. Uh, but now, since the situation is quite uncertain, um, they're, they're slowing down investments right now it's been the same for us worldwide, essentially. We have some people who are looking to rebound now. We have a lot of new entrants into the sector who, mm -hmm. who have recently come in. For example, we've seen in Thailand that will come in, they'll purchase their hotel with a, some investment. And these are the kinds of people we see to be really interested in adopting the technologies. Um, mm -hmm. But of course, those hotels that have just been struggling very hard throughout COVID, the last thing on their mind tends to be IoT. However, of right. course, that perhaps... The misunderstanding that we see people get sometimes is like we said, the IoT is more about having that flashy technology that's going to be increasing the value of the property. Um, especially when you see videos coming out, perhaps we're guilty of it as well, is that you use the video as kind of like an advertisement of this high tech level of attractiveness to your hotel. Um, mm -hmm. But in fact, of course, as you know, IoT brings real benefits in terms of COVID prevention and COVID safety. Um, it's just perhaps about changing the narrative at the moment from our side and from your side, I can imagine as well, to make sure that it is targeting people to understand that this predominantly isn't focusing on having flashy technology in your hotel. If you want it to, it can do that and it will always do that. Um, but the real value can come in, in terms of COVID prevention will be really strong. 
Um, mm -hmm. So my question is from your guys' side, is that when you have clients or potential clients coming back to you guys and saying, not right now, how do you find it when you perhaps try and spin the story and you can say, oh, actually, in the terms of COVID, this solution can be really useful for you guys? Do you think they see the message and understand it or are they still being a bit reluctant? Um, I think they do um, see the message. But, um, yeah, I think um, a lot of the operators are, are, are in very challenging circumstances. Um, Right now, I think um, the average occupancy in Thailand is probably, and especially in Bangkok, mm -hmm. um, probably you know in the ten ten to twenty percent uh, range. Um, so even you know with uh, with with um, the security or the safety um, features of IoT, with you know low amount of guesses, the the operators are still quite reluctant. It's tough. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough times. But I think it will come through. Um, we're, we're looking mm -hmm. to see a rebound generally as we come out of COVID, and we mm -hmm. do expect it will come around and there'll be more adoptin adoptance of the IoT tech when we move, especially into hospitality. From our side on a global scale, we've seen it's been pretty robust, to be honest with you, in terms of the resident mm -hmm. sector. Um, perhaps mm -hmm. last year when we were deep in those kind of first wave of global lockdowns, there was a bit of reluctance. Um, mm -hmm. And where there was a reluctance on one end, like we said, we see a lot of kind of enthusiasm towards those COVID preventive solutions. Mm -hmm. But again, to be honest with you, we're very bullish and very optimistic in the long term. Um, it's going to be a little while and let the market recover in terms of COVID, particularly in hospitality. Right. And we've seen so many companies such as yourselves around the world who have actually seen this as a really great time to go and innovate in the local market and it's kind of right. saying let's not wait until this is done let's start building the solution get everything in place right now and once that market hots up again we're going to be the guys in place because as you right, said right. You have all these companies who are saying come back in one year you're going to have your completely optimized strategy kind of set in place for that time so when you hit up with that email one is time be like yo guys we're back <laughs> are you guys ready right, now? Right. and that's where the recovery is going to be right Right, so right. My question is for you guys, if uh, perhaps not for a competitor, but if you, from what you've learned in the market so far, working in Thailand, um, would there be any points, perhaps misunderstandings you had before you entered into the hospitality or residential sector? Um, was there anything you, you've learned along the way that's been really interesting? Because I know you guys kind of came more from the technology sector and not so much from working in hotels or working in apartments. So mm -hmm. is there anything specific you've learned coming along the way about that particular industry that you think's really benefited you guys? Um, yeah, I think uh, one is being the technology in, inside of hotels, I think, are quite different than residential projects. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, hotels, uh, they use RCUs, um, which, you know, normally, typically, before this, when we were starting out with um, smart offices or smart homes or condos, um, those properties didn't have uh, these type of, uh, I guess, infrastructure or technology. Um, so the technical details are a bit different, um, which you know took us a while to to learn as well as well as um, as well as design uh, the solutions uh, for hotels. Yeah, I think it's from our side. So from both of our IoT perspective. In terms of the base layer technology for us, it runs very similarly. Like you use both a platform for managing smart apartments and also for smart hotels, right? The logic in terms of implementing the IoT works in a very similar way. Um, mm. The viewers watching, the things that we see, the biggest differences often come on the very front end, um, be it on the actual software itself or being mm. dealing with the clients as well. Um, that's where the real differences come. Like, for example, on the software end, you spoke about that in the hotel sector, it's not so mm -hmm. much about giving somebody a native app to download. It has to be totally frictionless and they can click that link and they can open it straight away. And, and then in apartments, people want to deal with it a bit more directly and have their own app they can use to control their own smart home. So, it, but generally in terms of when we jump back to the start of the conversation and we talk about that mass installation uh, of the smart devices, the logic runs really, really similarly across hotels right. and apartments. And I think a big message we want to try and get across to people is that it's not as complicated as you may think. Um, you can jump into this and it's really not that difficult once you get to grips with the logic. Um, especially, I think, from us, kind of to you guys and to deliver to your clients, 
I think you can imagine sometimes that when you see a traditional hotel operator coming and seeing how you run this, they must think, no, this is going to be far too complicated. And what we're hoping you can deliver as well is what is an even more and more uh, simple solution going forwards. And because like you say, you're trying to make IoT easy and trying to make it more accessible. And I think at the moment, until we have a way in which it's really easily adoptable and frictionless, particularly on the enterprise solutions, not enough companies are going to take the jump. Um, and that's going to be the tricky thing, really. So I guess my kind of final question to you guys in terms of the implementation of your solutions is that when you go into your hotels and apartments, do you find that your customers are ready to go all in? Uh, or do you find that they will try and go and say, let's go and install one or two rooms. We'll try that out for six months and we'll test the results and we'll move forward. Or do you find that they say, cool, love it. Let's do the whole hotel. Um, typically, it's, uh, um, I guess, uh, the latter uh, being that um, they, they typically want to try it out first, maybe one floor at a time. Mm -hmm. um, try it out for a few months um, and then eventually if they like it, uh, they'll do the whole uh, property. Mm -hmm. But one of the, I guess, challenges that we encountered was that um, I guess uh, there aren't enough guesses for them to test yeah. out yeah. <laughs> each of the floors. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we're definitely waiting for the, the market to bounce back. Um, and I think, yeah, um, I think as you mentioned earlier, um, we're, we're just, you know, um, getting ready, uh, for, for that moment, uh, preparing. And, you know, once everything slowly, uh, bounce back, uh, we'll be ready to take it, to capitalize on the, the opportunity. Exactly. And I think as we wrap up, that's kind of been a lot of the message we've had today is kind of getting that pre preparation in place. Um, we've been out there testing the market as have you guys, and we know that is very much the case at the moment. It just needs a bit more time in terms of warming up coming out of COVID, particularly in the hospitality sector. Uh, apartments, we've right. seen to be okay, but it's just about that being totally prepared for when the opportunity arises, perhaps we hope within six to eight months, uh, and the hotels are coming around again and being like, right, we need to get back and be really competitive now because everyone's jumping back into the market. And that's kind right. of what we hope the biggest opportunity is going to be coming, particularly for you guys moving forward in Thailand. So right. uh, that'll wrap us up for today, Nick. Um, huge thank okay. you for joining us. I uh, really appreciate you guys and all the work you've been doing. It's been really fantastic. And we're super, super optimistic for you moving forwards. Um, and we really are excited to see the things you can do in those kind of enterprise IT solutions over in Thailand. So huge thanks. Thank you, David. Cool. So thank you, guys. Thank you to all the audience for coming today as well. Um, you will be able to catch up with this. If you have any questions, feel free to hit us up. And we will record this and post this up on the YouTube channel under Industry Land. So thank you, everybody. Huge thanks. And we hope to see you all very soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.